just want to welcome everyone. Um, for those I've not yet had the pleasure of meeting, my name is McKinley Melton. I am currently the English Area Representative um, with the College Language Association, and I have had the distinct pleasure of also working as a part of the program committee. Uh, and so I wanna welcome everyone to the very first event of the CLA Member Circle Presents event series. Um, more information on this is of course available under the CLA Scholars website. You can look at the CLA Member Circle section and you will see that there are a number of other events and programs that are coming up in the coming months, but I'll hold off on that. Uh, we'll save that announcement for the end. And instead, I wanna take this opportunity to welcome our panelists, as well as to welcome our guests. And to say, we're so thankful that you all have agreed to come in and talk with us about this amazing film that we've just finished watching on the Chicago, on Chicago and the Black Arts Movement. And so I wanna set up uh, our panelists and let us give them a warm, warm CLA welcome. We have Dr. Tabidi Lewis, who is, a, um, who is a professor at Washington State University. We also have um, Dr. Pavithra Narayanan, who is also a professor at Washington wow. State um, University of Vancouver, USA. And then we have Dr. Kassare Abdul Ghani, who is a professor at Temple University. And so we're excited to hear their thoughts on the film, um, I imagine they will start with some opening comments and then we will yield the floor for questions and comments from those who have just had the opportunity to view the film. So thank you all so much for coming. And uh, Dr. Lewis, I'll, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, uh, thank you. So um, I just wanna um, begin by saying, um, you know, thank you to the uh, CLA Circle Committee for extending the invitation to us to uh, have the opportunity to share uh, our work with the, uh, with the scholars within this language uh, association. And um, you may be asking, you know, why are the three of us, the panelists here today? And, uh, you know, we are all the co-editors of a forthcoming book with uh, Northwestern University Press uh, by the same title, you know, uh, Chicago, Black, uh, Chicago Black Arts uh, Movement Reader. And so Dr. Abdul Ghani and Dr. Narayanan are both co-editors as part of this project. And so this is a great opportunity to uh, make people aware of the forthcoming project. And, um, you know, there, would, there may be some opportunities for some additional contributions to uh, the project. Uh, and uh, we, we can, you know, we'll talk about that later. But you know, this is a culmination of a larger uh, conversation around, you know, Black art, Black literature, Black culture, and what does it mean to mine the, um, you know, the, the cultural roots of, um, of, of what's possible. Um, and so, um, you know, this project um, is, um, I just want to say, you know, someone made a remark uh, and just said, hey, great work, but, um, you know, this, this, this film uh, evolved out of the book project and in engaging in recordings of interviews with people like Phil Coran, Haki Matabudi, um, you know, Sterling Plump, um, you, know, you know, all the people that you saw there. I begged Pavitra, you know, who I know is a great filmmaker to please, uh, this is gonna be an opportunity as I'm interviewing these people, you know, I, I want to turn this in, I think there's an opportunity to turn this into a film, but I need your help. Uh, I know a little something, I like films. <laughs> I know about literature, the Black Arts Movement, but uh, I really need your help. And after much bribing and begging, uh, Pavithra agreed uh, to help me. And um, I, 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 Pavithra doesn't, I feel very fortunate that she said yes, because she doesn't suffer fools. And she's very serious. And so, um, you know, I learned so much uh, in the in the in the process. And um, and you know, uh, Dr. Abdul Ghani is uh, really serious about the Black Arts Movement. And so, uh, between the two projects, it is just such a great uh, uh, match uh, in uh, in in cultural production. So, uh, you know, Chicago for me. 
for me was something that uh, when I was 20, maybe 23, straight out of graduate school, I took a job at Third World Press and it was in the very early 1990s, maybe 91, 92. And I was, a, I, was uh, I studied, you know, um, I just had a master's degree, but I, you know, studied African-American literature and I had the opportunity to uh, be in Chicago and I'd read about, oh, the Black Arts Movement started in 1965 and it ended by 1975 or 1960 ended in 1965. But I'm in Chicago and I'm seeing people still building institutions. This kind of work is thriving. And, uh, you know, you're meeting Gwendolyn, Brooks, you're hanging out with Gwendolyn Brooks and Amiri Brock is coming to town and you're engaging with Sonia Sanchez and, and Nikki Giovanni. And, you know, Amiri Brock is coming through. We're having these conferences. You're, you're, you're becoming aware of the Institute of Positive Education. You know Southside uh, uh, Cultural Arts Center is in space, in that place, Dusab Museum. You know, all of these, all of these things are happening. And uh, I, you know, was really taking it in while you're actually engaging in the work of, uh, and you, you know, Chicago's so vibrant. You know, this is this, this history of political activism. And, you know, you got the Nation of Islam over here. So you have all these, these different components. And so, uh, for me, it was a, this film was a homecoming of, um, of, of, uh, of my life, a large part of my life's experiences in, in being serious. And, and actually Black Arts is the reason I got, when I was an undergraduate student, got into, I think I want to major in English and then I want to study this, which is really amazing. And so, you know, the film is really an opportunity to say, look, you know, here's a cityscape, as I talked about in the introduction, but also, uh, you know, we're hoping that the that um, the film and the forthcoming book project charts the Black arts experience in a new direction with, uh, with a lens focused on Chicago and how it managed to sustain several institutions and, uh, and, and to point out that there are many voices that, that, that weren't fully captured here, but our, the book will do it. People like Alice Browning and Vivian Harsh and others who laid groundwork and made this moment really vibrant. And, you know, I'm hoping people see, you know, in, in the film, there were so many uh, female role models who uh, were institution builders and mentoring um, people and playing a, an, an important role. So um, I'll, I'll just stop there because if I keep talking, uh, the, the other panelists won't have an opportunity to, to chime in. And so, this is the point where Pravitra gives you the um, the uh, uh, the punchline uh, of uh, of humor here. But uh, uh, Pavitra and uh, Casare, if you'd like to talk a little bit, Casare, you, you you can go ahead. Okay. Well, hi everyone again. Um, yeah, so thank you all for, you know, having me on this panel. Thank you to the CLA committee. Uh, when I think about Chicago Black Arts Movement, you know, I think about it in terms of how the movement engages us with a complex set of questions um, that resonate from Black U.S. and global artistic movements, such as the New Negro Renaissance, uh, the Black Chicago Renaissance, that is a precursor to the Chicago Black Arts Movement, Negritude, uh, and, you know, thinking about what are the possibilities of an artistic form that represents Black people. So what happens when Black art stays Black? What happens when Black sacred traditions, the Africanisms linked to West and Central Africa, stay sacred? And overall, what happens when Blackness rooted in tradition and culture is uncompromised by popular and dominant forces? So in the documentary, uh, poet Sterling Plump, as well as uh, the former director Carol Adams, answer these questions alluding to Black art being shaped and defined by Africana culture from its roots in the Deep South in the US to its connections with third world and grassroots organizing. So, you know, if we think about Haki Matabuti or Don Lee, 
discussing his volunteer curatorship, volunteer, right? <laughs> With, you know, the Ebony Museum, or as we know as the DuSable Museum, as he recalls um, Margaret Burroughs building an artistic and cultural, really museum in her house. But now, you know, I think we can make those connections of how her home's artifacts, you know, that digging up our past or knowing our history, um, to compliment Arthur Schomburg, who did the same thing with building up a library, which we know now as the Schomburg Center for Research in Black Culture. So what I think what this documentary reveals is that it shows the parallels of the preservation of Africana history and you know what keeps Blackness authentic. And I'm so happy that we are discussing this film during Black History Month. Um, and you know, and while also articulating um, in my forthcoming book, sort of this unapologetic, riotous nature of the Black arts movement. And my book is called Start a Riot. And, you know, it offers a critique of the status quo. And so we see that in the documentary with community murals, such as the Wall of Respect, that also give life to, you know, the Wall of Consciousness in Philadelphia or the Wall of Dignity in Detroit. Um, while also definitely carrying into the 21st century longstanding elements of radical liberation um, through music and the spoken word. So I think we can't forget when Tabiti was talking about that vibrancy that he still felt in the 90s post the um, movement of of uh, the Black arts, that I think what sustains the Black arts movement and how you still feel that life, because I also felt it when I was, you know, in Chicago many times with um, some of the sons and daughters of the Chicago Black arts. Um, you know, I think that that's what resonates. So that institutional building, you know, the seeds that are planted in the 1960s, as Serafisa Marabuti mentions with, you know, bringing up the next generation. So I always think about in this documentary of Mawada Bowden, you know, who is of the AACM, right? But today he also directs the jazz ensembles at the University of Chicago. And so I actually work very closely with his son, Kahari Bowden, who mm. is a spoken word poet. And, you know, I discussed him in my book, Starter Riot, which actually it's named after his poem. And so he dedicates this poem to his father, to Gil Scott Heron. And, you know, he presents it at this, um, at Hamilton Park, this, this concert that Mawada Bonin puts on, or well, before the pandemic would put on. Um, and this was specifically during the Black Lives Matter protests of 2015 and 2016. So I think if we think about the Chicago Black Arts Movement and its legacy, I think we have to understand it through its roots of ordinary people, um, building on you know, past foundations that centralize Black expression in Chicago that impact our lives every day. And, you know, and we see that um, and I and I, you know, make those connections. So I'm very grateful for this documentary and the project that we're working on because it just breathes new life into thinking about the Black arts movement. Uh, but it also recalls us to dig up our past that, you know, Arthur Schomburg wrote so eloquently in his in his essay many, many, you know, decades ago in the 20th century. So those are my reflections of the documentary. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Pavitra and um, thank you uh, for this invitation. Thank you for the, you know, um, taking the time to watch the film and, and to chat with us. Uh, it's really great to be with all of you. Uh, you know, briefly uh, to tell you, it was an honor for me to be part of this uh, project. Um, it, as he, you know, started, you know, it, he he did have to uh, he he did have to con convince me to to really collaborate on the work, and, and not because I I did not uh, understand or recognize the importance of that work. 
right but uh, in part is because uh, it, so my my work is uh, in in the area of post colonial studies and i do book history and so there, i'm i am definitely interested and in, that's what i write about the building of institutions but uh, the area of black studies itself you know the that is not uh, my my study or research focus you know and it would uh, it would mean that i it you know, it's a new area that I would have to read, I would have to learn, I would have to understand. And so there have been a big, you know, time commitment. And I just wanted to make really sure, you know, if I do this, then I, I can do that too, you know, because otherwise, uh, you know, I could, I could not have uh, been part of that, uh, of this project. And so I was happy to just, you know, just uh, reorganize, you know, the way I was thinking about my own work also, and to, uh, and, and, and to say, hey, yeah, sure, we, we could make uh, this, uh, this documentary, and, <clears throat> and of course, like all documentaries, it's an idea, right, you can have, you can think about a book, but to think about how you're going to do it, you know, in film, is completely different, and it was a, just a truly amazing, you know, experience uh, for me to just go, go uh, to go to Chicago and and to meet uh, uh, to meet all of these artists and uh, authors who have, you know, just uh, it's a lifetime, right, of building institutions to listen to them, to hear their stories, to see, you know, what, what their dedication and, you know, commitment, you know, <clears throat> was about and was to give back to the communities, to build, you know, uh, for the future. And it, it, it was truly, you know, in, incredible. Uh, they were uh, really generous with their time and uh, inviting us to their spaces and also, uh, in, in sharing their their histories in and stories uh, with with me, you know. So uh, in terms of the technical part itself, you know, with the filming, uh, Tabithi would help, you know, set up uh, the equipment and and uh, and I would film it, and he would ask questions. But in part, you know, as it, it, the interviews, you know, went on. It, you know, I, I kind of got integrated into uh, e even asking, you know, those questions because I'm also thinking about the film, you know, what we need to include. And, and, then, and uh, you know, all of them were really kind to me. They never saw me as, a, as this outsider, you know, there in, in their space and, and, uh, and just included me in, in that conversation. And, and we had uh, dinners and lunches together, and just learned learned a lot, a lot from them. And and then uh, afterwards, you know, I'm just sitting with with all of these hours of footage, hours of footage. Okay, I have to give uh, credit to Tabithi, you know, for setting up all of these interviews. But at these hours of footage, and then there's suddenly this uh, this burden, right, that uh, that I feel. So th this is like like history. It's not like something as Sabati said. Is no, is not even like you know. Okay, it started in, in this you know sixty two. There's not like a term or or a duration of period or sixty two ends in sixty five. But this is like a history that goes back. Just listening to them, and that's uh, something that is going to continue. And so uh, to think about how uh, how I would edit that, right, was. Uh, uh, it was just something I, I really spent hours on, you know, think, thinking about it, going through the footage, how, you know, uh, in, again, you know, uh, doing a lot of reading, of course, listening to, you know, what, uh, what Tabithi envisioned uh, for the film, and he, he's my humor side, okay, Tabithi. If you haven't made a film, you can and you will have this really big kind of dream and vision, you know. And uh, <coughs> I want to share a small snippet with you. So, 
initially my thought was Hitabati, go through this footage, uh, look at this interview, and um, and then, you know, just send me, you know, with the timeline and, you know, the minutes and was about, you know, the first interview and and tell me where, where you want me to make the edits. <clears throat> that that interview was over two hours long, okay? And uh, then he sends this sheet back and I look at it and I'm like, what, what did he do? You know, because all he's asking me to edit is about 15 minutes of those two hours. So I'm looking and back to the film. All he edited was, you know, wherever there were spaces, gaps, you know, when they were talking or if they coughed, it was, that's all he edited, you know, because, and, and I say that to you because that it, it it's so important it is difficult it is difficult to make that decision when someone is telling you their story to say i'm going to now edit that story right because of course the story they tell you and then the story that you edit may may be completely different right because then um, you're going to come up with a a, a different narrative so um i certainly you know understood uh, Tabithi's, you know, pain in having to, to do that. But I also realized that, you know, he 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 was not able to do it he, because you can think in a book. You in the book you can make that book longer, you know. And so I I told him, the book is the space where, the that entire narrative, the entire interview, can be there. You know, no edits with with that. But in the film, I said. You know, unless you want the Stena film that no one is going to watch, that is not really edited, we can't do it. And so, uh, so at that point, you know, I I made some, uh, you know, the judgment calls day and uh, and 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 just ed edited the the entire film on my own. You know, if I if I had you know wanted to know something uh, about. Uh, uh, about a particular part in history, I would ask Tabithi, but but he didn't know that the whole editing was actually happening because I edited the film, and then um, I said, "Hey, Tabithi, we we have the film," and he said, "What?" I said, "Hey, just come watch the film," and uh, and then of course he started crying, and I was not ready with tissues and all of that, and. And then the crying went on for a really long time, and it was just an, a, a really emotional moment. But uh, he said, uh, "Hey, P, you you got it. You got you know the film." And uh, and and then I I worry, and I told him, you know, my biggest worry is that um, that uh, the artists we we interviewed, you know, what will they think, you know, do, do, are they okay? And so we uh, screened it first in uh, in Chicago and, um, uh, and, and some of them were able to, uh, to attend it. Uh, several, it. several. Yeah, but not everyone because we we you know interviewed uh, many of them and uh, and 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 they loved it and they and they were also very emotional about the film. Uh, it meant a lot to them and uh, and it it, it uh, possibly when they said to me, "Hey, Pavitra, you, you know you captured that well." Uh, it it. You know that was that point where I was just okay. You know, it's okay. We 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 were able to make that film, and uh, and just so important, okay, because the time that uh, it it took a while, right, from the time we have the idea and we have the film and you know the editing and doing it, and then screening the film. A few years had passed, and and uh, the time that I'd seen them earlier in Chicago for the interviews, and then. During the screening, they'd all gotten older, and uh, and also, you know, one of them, you know, had had passed away. The that interview that uh, that uh, Tabithi did, you know, is is that last interview, 
uh, and uh, but but for them uh, just to end you know with what they said they you know and they said you know uh, this hasn't been done before no one's uh, captured our stories no one's captured our work uh, and it's so important they wanted us to to show the film to every to everyone you know and anyone who would watch it they wanted us to show the film especially to the youth to understand the importance importance of community building the importance of giving back but also to understand you know as Kessa Ray was talking about her own work you know uh, that history right and if you don't understand that how do we how do we build that future in and and they were just so appreciative that uh, that you know it it might just be you know a fifty minute film, but that fifty minute film you know it's okay it's documented in some form and and they were really happy about it and and I can tell you it was a, it it was an honor it was a it was a big life changing experience for me and uh, to go to all of those. Uh, spaces and uh, you know with the hangout in the uh, south side of Chicago and I might have been the only one who was really not afraid of just walking down and and uh, in some of uh, the, my fr the friends from a third world press they would say hey Pete you sure you're going to take a walk on your own and I said yep yeah, it can't be safer and uh, it, it just transformed uh, my experience, my work, and also made me think about what am I doing? You know, what am I building for the community? What am I giving back? And so uh, it, it, was, it was really Thank you. Yeah, um, Pavitra, thank you for that. I, I, I wanna echo what Casa Ray said and what you said, you know, uh, I think the film is is an expression of what happens when black art stays black and um you know as we attempt to really you know mine those voices and and as Cassare said black arts uh the black arts movement equals the roots uh in ordinary people and uh and Pavitra I you know I want to say and you know Cassare Pavitra you know let's sort of chime in here but you know the uh the film itself you know, uh, you're being a little modest, but part of the aesthetic was actually this, this component of, you know, uh, and we argued about this a bit and uh, you made the case of, wait a minute, you know, what, what aesthetically and what politically is this, is the Black Arts moment about, which is voice. And I think the film is true to that aesthetic of giving the subjects objectivity and allowing their voice, their voices really carry, they tell the story. And so, uh, which was the point of, you know, we will tell our story. Here's our history, the ordinary people, the people, right? These dynamics. And so uh, I think that that is the, the thing that really uh, comes through so wonderfully uh, throughout the entire film is, you know, shaping that narrative. And, and yes, the, the book project gives a, a much fuller, uh, exploration into so many other components, the Vivian Harshes, the Alice Brownings, the Afro Arts Theater, the, you know, all those things. And so, um, you know, but, but the film is just also a statement in saying, there are so many more projects that are left to do. We don't have to come up with a new theoretical language and throw some ism on it. It's right there. I mean, I've said this everywhere I go, it's right there. Uh, examine Institute of Positive Education, and it's collaborations with AACM or, uh, you know, the schools being built or the, the uh, Third World Press and the kind of literature that it was producing or Path Press or the intersections between um, Obasi and Afrocobra and, uh, you know what I'm saying, and, and AACM and, you know, so it is there, these cross sections. And that's not just Chicago, that's San Francisco, that's New Orleans, that is St. Louis, which is where I'm from. I mean, you know, the Midwest, uh, uh, 
the uh, Chicago started a, a, a drama collective that then became a Midwest collective that encompassed several cities of uh, theater companies that banded together to keep themselves viable. Um, and so there's so much that, that we as scholars uh, are, you know, need to think about, you know, really mining the roots of what's there. And uh, this project is, you know, it's like who did the first, you know, biography of Zorner Hurston. You can smash it up if you want to, but you have to, you have to reference it. And then all the other work that comes out of it. This is just to say, let's stabilize how we think about, you know, mining the richness of, you know, a moment such as the Black arts, which, you know, in my opinion, which part of the impetus was, you know, it's a, it is a moment that has been curiously flattened into a narrative of angry low art and sexism that people want to forget. And that, who, who decided that, you know, and, and we just, you know, it's one of the most significant moments in, 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 uh, in American literature. And, uh, you know, how can it, how, why are there so many narrow conclusions and judgments being drawn about the Black arts movement, whose artists and institutions have had a significant and long lasting impact, you know, few of any movements can make, you know, such a claim, you know, so, you know, you had all these literary and visual artists and intellectuals uh, who I think are underappreciated. And I, I saw, you know, we see Chicago, and I think you heard some of the scholars, Stephen Casimir, you know, Howard Ransby talk about it as a central focal point, you know, um, that has been underexamined. And so, you know, it's really kind of a statement to us as scholars, as intellectuals to say, you know, there's so many great projects that we need to explore. Okay, I, I talk too much, I'm gonna shut up. Yeah, I mean, I would agree. When you were speaking to BD, I was, I mean, that documentary, it, I, I, I wrote down the comment, um, it's a syncopated call and response. And that, you know, you not only hear the voices of, you know, a William Walker, you know, the community muralist um, who's speaking, but it translates into those connections of today with the, um, when I, when I'm referring to the spoken word. So I'm thinking of the William Walker more explicitly because that was the first time in the um, documentary that I actually heard him speak. I never heard his voice, but through his work in terms of, you know, helping with the wall of respect and then how that, you know, offshoots in other cities with, you know, learning the pioneers, everything is together. You still hear that voice coming out of those walls that are really, you know, on the backsides of the corner store or, you know, people's, you know, apartments. Um, and, but it also connected to me in terms of, um, you know, before I knew explicitly about the Black Arts Movement, which I came to learn about it in college, at my HBCU, Johnson C. Smith University, which is right behind me. But I, the Black Arts Movement was always with me. So with the wall of respect, for example, there was still a wall of respect when I was growing up. Um, in San Francisco, it was Tazuri Watu, we are a beautiful people. That was our mural. So to make those connections and to hear um, William Walker speak about, you know, what that art is so we can see and understand the poetry and the drama and the unapologetic blackness that is you know coming out of the literature but i think we also have to connect the um the art history right that also um emerges out of the chicago black arts movement i think that they are um, you know, we kind of credit the, you know, Philadelphia for that, right, in terms of seeing all the beautiful murals, but, you know, in terms of it staying Black, um, that's Chicago, you know, that's William Walker, and that's, you know, all of those, in Obasi that, you know, um, who created, you know, the wall of respect and, and showing, you know, our Malcolm X's and Du Bois and, you know, the beautiful dancer. So all of this art, that keeps us going, but also showing our beauty. Um, so 
that's what I, I would say in connection to what you're what you've stated to be. There is a question in the chat about, are there any recordings of the musicians or artists in action that can be heard? There've been several um, museum exhibits that have featured AACM, Afro Cobra, um, and you know all of these amazing uh, you know musicians and uh, you know uh, the plethora of the artists uh, working uh, in some really cool exhibits. One of them was um, exhibited at Dusab, and the other was at the uh, oh uh, Chicago Modern Arts Museum uh, around the time we were beginning the project. I'm, I'm sorry, I can't remember the name of the museum. But um, yes, there is footage. Um, and then of course, also the History Makers um, has quite a bit of extensive material as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. I also mentioned Mawada Bowden. And so um, if you, um, his son Kahari Bowden has a lot of his music in the background of his, uh, his spoken word poetry. So I'll type his name in because his work is on YouTube. Uh, and so that's where you can, you know, hear that creative jazz in, in the background. Hey, can I tell a story of um, a couple of summers ago after making this film, I got to, you know, go beyond just knowing some of the poets and dramatists, but, um, really making a connection also with uh, Gerald Williams. And he connected me with uh, Jay and Wadsworth and uh, Robert Page. And so I'm just, I'm just remembering driving in the car, you know, Gerald is like 80 something. And he picked me up because I was there doing some research and we drive to a, uh, uh, this special exhibit that features, that's featuring Wadsworth's stuff. And it was just incredible, you know, uh, just getting the opportunity to hang out with these visual artists uh, from this particular moment, uh, particularly around Africa, you know, the Afro Cobra, you know, uh, the 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 uh, you know the uh, living artists. And so, uh, for me, it is just a gift that just keeps giving, and um, and uh, I you know I'm I'm really cherishing the moment, and you know it's a constant reminder of. Uh, the fact that we do this work that uh, in some ways as we're engaging the theoretical, I think sometimes people lose uh, sight of what it really means. And uh, I think, um, you know, uh, Kassare and Pavitra have both alluded to the fact that, you know, when Haki says we were serious as a first love, right? And you go, oh, that's cute. You know, and then you stop and go, okay, this guy's a poet. And so you think about a first love, right? This is it. This is it. There's no, but they're really serious. This is not just creating some art, but really serious about the art changing the world. So when the Afro Cobra artists are, you know, engaging in the Kool Aid colors, which Robert Page, you know, kind of coins that idea and, you know, uh, for them. But, uh, but, you know, family is the focus or what have you you see people are saying, yeah, we're gonna make art, we're gonna give people space to be their independent self, but, but the work is gonna have an impact on people's psyche, on the community. It's gonna create you know, uh, something that is gonna move people forward. Or when Val Gray Ward is talking about, you know, they're walking into bars, right? We gotta take the art to the people and they you know, begin engaging a soliloquy. You know, this is really, they're really serious. And I'm gonna tell you, they're far smarter than the vast majority of the scholars that I've met, far smarter than me, uh, very well read, uh, really, you know, serious as a first love, very serious about, um, you know, uh, change, um, transformational art and society, uh, transforming society through, through their art. You know, it's not just an exercise uh, and, you know, when I look at that film or when you, you in, in encounter those people, uh, these individuals, it's a reminder of the kind of people that paved the way for us to be in the spaces that we're in doing the kind of work that we're doing. And to honor them is to go back and reflect on what were they doing 
and think about whatever or whoever is maligned, this is not important and not really, you know, deep, aesthetic, theoretical, artistic, what have you, and say, wait a minute, what's the politics behind that? And if you really examine the work, you go, oh my God, wait a minute, this is, you know, this is really functioning on, you know, multiple levels and really deep, and let's really examine what's happening here. Uh, so um, don't forget the politics behind what you're being told is important and, and is not important. And there's so many young graduate students and young scholars that are running around looking for an identity and it's all sitting right there. I can't, we can't do everything. There's so much, there's so much. You know, when you walk through Haki's house or Gerald Williams, these people, they have millions of dollars of artifacts. Because if we're, as I'm an older scholar now, I'm in my 50s. When I was in my 20s, you're just like, oh, yeah, I'm in this house. They got this art, this blah, blah, blah. But millions of dollars of artifacts. And, you know, we aren't, we're looking, we're looking out. We're looking down. You know how you have a, the girl, the girl you should be with or the guy you should be with, you're looking over here and there, that, that real thing is right there. We're looking somewhere else and it's right there. The, it's right there. The, the, your, your tenure book, your endowed professorship, your uh, groundbreaking work, it is right there. And people are looking elsewhere uh, instead of, um, you know, examining uh, the, uh, you know, the richness. And there are a number of scholars that whose work reflects that. Um, you know, I think Howard and, uh, you know, uh, so many others, but not enough, still not enough, uh, still not enough. So I just answered Jose's uh, question in the chat, you know, about uh, the footage. So uh, we, we do have plans about uh, creating this website. You know, the, there's a lot of material, right, that we did uh, gather that I think it would be really great to actually have it out there and available and, um, and especially how to connect all of this, right, for uh, for students, for the youth, to make it available and accessible, and uh, uh, so so we do need to get get round to it. Some of it is just about time and making that time to be able to to finish that work. But most immediately, we want to uh, complete this uh, edited book and uh, to have that, and then you know work on on everything else. And let me answer the question, what are the hardest parts or concepts of Lee? Every, everything. How do you cut Phil Koran? Where do you cut him? Where do you cut him? Where do you, but you know, Pavithra, uh, I will say this. I, I interviewed Phil Koran for about five hours. Uh, tablet, uh, camera, iPhone, right? And everything ran out of batteries. I'm setting up everything. And, um, but you, you begin to get more precise in the interviewing, which I think that's my answer. That makes it easier. So you don't have as much to leave on the cut, you know, so much on the cutting floor and you keep them from going way out here and there. But, you know, I don't know. What do you, what do you cut of Phil Koran? What do you cut of high key? What do you cut, of, you know what I'm saying, of Mawata? Where do, where do you cut? <laughs> Which is why, as Pavita pointed out, this sort of larger, um, uh, here we go back to digital humanities and di digital, you know, techno you know, digital um, curating, uh, where you, you know, kind of create the space where, you know, people are able to, uh, to uh, have access to, to this material, you know, in a way that, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it, as far as establishing the extensive relationships, um, you know, some of that is just is just dumb luck, but also about personality. And I think as sometimes as academics, we're curious about ideas, but not people. And so, um, you know, I, I find people really compelling and interesting. And, um, you know, we just have to be very intentional about um, even if you're having a conversation with uh, Miriam uh, Graham. You know, uh, this is someone that can give you game and uh, that 
you know, it's important to maintain a relationship or Jerry Ward or, you know, I mean, I could keep going. I think people know those names. And so I'm just trying to make it really relevant. Uh, it's about, are we really serious about what we do? And are do you, you know, not everybody can have great skills in that way, but I have managed not as well as I would like to, to just honestly keep connections, you know, with, with people over time and hold on to those numbers <laughs> from being in those spaces. And, uh, you know, and that's just dumb luck. Right. Um, but, but it is about, are you really curious about the work, like establishing those relationships and continuing? You know, I get a call from a Usini, a high key, uh, you know, uh, Eugene Redmond, you know, you talk to these people, you know, uh, on a, on a somewhat regular, uh, basis. And if I don't hear from them, I'll just reach out to say hi. And that means I stopped my life because people are what's important, you know? Um, so, uh, yeah. Other questions, comments? I just, my, really, it's more a comment than a question. I just want to say I really um, am so thankful for this work um, that you all are doing and, and to really think about, I mean, when I think about the Black Arts Movement in Chicago in particular, I, I think a lot about institution building, right? I think a lot about the investment in, in not just legacy for the sake of legacy, but the real understanding that, you know, we're building something important here. And I think about the work that you all are doing as is, is, is invested in the work of preservation, right? In the work of really honoring those institutions and, and, and making, making it clear to as, to as many people as possible what those institutions were, what they are, and and what their their value is, and so I just want to say, you know, thank you for this work. Um, you know, listening to you, um, you know, Dr. Narayan, I am uh, I am I do not have a documentary heart because I want to keep it all. Um, I could I, I don't I can barely cut words, let alone cut interviews. So uh, I tremendously appreciate the very the the ethic that you all brought to this to really tell the story that needed to be told. And I just um, I really enjoyed the work, and I'm looking forward to to the book project and everything that also emerges from from the foundation you all have laid here. So uh, sorry for the long winded comment, but just to just to thank you. No, we thank you. Thank you, really appreciate that. And Kassare, did you want to tie in some of this conversation um, a bit more back to your the work you're doing around the, uh, the Black arts? Uh, in what way? Which I don't know. I'm I'm just being real uh, wide open on, around that. <laughs> Well, I remember we had a conversation the other day about how um, the Black arts really delves into um, civil disobedience. I think we talked about that. And so some of the work that um, is, you know, rooted in the literature or the poetry um, is, you know, perceived as defiant or um, because it overtly examines the um, political issues of the day in terms of you know, housing insecurity. I mean, those issues that we still deal with today, um, police brutality, um, vigilante violence. Um, I think that one of the reasons why the Black Arts Movement, we study it and we talk about it, but I think that we gloss over those um, difficult dialogues. So in terms of my work and examining the Black Arts Movement, I examine those understudied works. Um, for example, um, you know, the Henry Dumas's uh, short story, Riot or Revolt which, you know, it, it, it's inspired by the 1964 Harlem Bedford Stuyvesant, um, you know, uh, uprising or that takes place where, you know, a young African-American is, uh, male is shot and killed um, by a police chief and um, in other works. 
such as Sonia Sanchez is the Bronx is next. Um, and even Gwendolyn Brooks, Gwendolyn Brooks Riot, her, her um, long form poem, Riot. And, you know, so I think the Black arts movement, um, I, I'm really interested, especially in these times of, of re revolt, in terms of rebellion, I'm really interested in how these works, um, The Slave by Mary Baraka, how they really sort of interrogate those questions about reparations, about, um, uh, you know, and using the theater, right, uh, as a way to examine those questions. Um, and so I, I guess if we think about collectively in the documentary, particularly when that scene where um, Francis and Val Ward are speaking. And remember when they were talking about how, you know, they were, they were, um, you know, reciting their poetry and they were, you know, they were doing their, uh, they were working on their art, but the police were around them um, because, you know, the police as, you know, the, the, the state patrollers, right. You know, are thinking that all these, Black people that are have congregated together, you know, something criminal is is about to happen. And so when Val um, Ward, when she speaks about, oh well, we had to, you know, start singing the hymnals, you know, we had to start, you know, getting back to the church. And then so then that's when the police, you know, they move away. So so those sort of um, points that cold, it's the cold switching, but it's also that point where you know, um, you have, you know, I, I, I thought that story was just, it's so, it so resonates with the fact that there's always this, um, this surveillance of Black expression. And, and so in the Black arts movement, these writers are talking about that. They're reciting it in their spoken word poetry. They are, you know, um, on the wall of respect, they are, you know, beautifying that with showing the struggle. And so I think that we can't forget um, those sort of um, difficult ways of, of thinking about um, the, the, the sorrowful issues that link to the Black experience as well, because, you know, through the writing, through the, the, the art, you know, they were also very invested in the liberation of Black people, you know, from imperialist, you know, forces. So that's what my book looks at, at Start a Riot. Yeah, coming out August 15th, 2022, University Press of Mississippi. You want, you want to drop that one more time? That's just coming when now? Oh, August uh, 15th, 2022. So the book, the entire title is Start a Riot, Civil Unrest and Black Arts Movement, Drama, Poetry, and Fiction. Awesome. Awesome. So I will I will say I wanna, you know, I wanna I wanna close on that. And quite frankly, because we want to close with the names of the books that are forthcoming um, for folks to to dive into this work as it um, as you take us to the next step. Um, but I do wanna again thank everyone. Um, for attending this panel, for, for bringing your eyes and your ears and your attention. Um, and it has been a wonderful way to launch the CLA Member Circle Presents. Um, and with that, I do wanna turn over to um, Dr. Batista, who has, I believe, some closing comments for us. <clears throat> Um, well, once again, uh, I want to I want to thank Dr. Abdul Ghani, uh, Dr. Narayanan, and uh, Dr. Lewis for for this wonderful panel and for the opportunity to watch this this um, documentary. That's it's I mean in, in today's parlance, it's a master class, right? Um, that I, I, we we we've been gifted. So I want to deeply thank you uh, each of you for for this wonderful um, uh, work that you shared you shared with us. And on behalf of um, of the College Languages Association. Um, I would like to again thank you all for for joining us um, here today. The our first installment of the CLA um, members uh, 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 presents uh, um, uh, uh, that we've um, organized for for uh, our CLA members as a bridge right till our our postponed um, uh, convention in 2023. Um, and 
And I also want to point out that we, we do have other uh, um, sessions coming up, uh, uh, events. Uh, we, uh, there's the March event, uh, which is the uh, uh, multiple book launch. There's no date yet uh, uh, on that, but uh, we're, we're, we're working on, on, on hammering and fixing a date. Then there's the, uh, the uh, in April, April 7th, uh, at 7 p.m., we have the Furious Flower panel on Jericho Brown and, and, uh, and business meeting. On uh, May 10th, we have the Summer Productivity Workshop uh, with CLAJ. And uh, June uh, 4th, we have uh, uh, Zumba with uh, our very own uh, Dr. Uh, Bailey. Um, so uh, once again, uh, thank you so much for, for uh, uh, joining, uh, joining us. And thank you again so much for, for this wonderful documentary film on the Black Arts Movement. Um, oh, and one thing we should also recall uh, uh, today, uh, um, I don't want to end with this note, but uh, uh, about uh, the, the loss of life at, uh, 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 in, in Ukraine because of the, this is a historic moment um, that uh, we, we shouldn't uh, um, leave unmentioned. Um, but on a, on a positive note, wonderful, wonderful documentary. And I, I, and I am so much better uh, for it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good night.